You'll have to turn right if you stay here. Will you shut up? Whose car is it, anyway? None of your business. Are we right out there? glamour in the research business. In fact, it's not all research in the research business. There's a fair bit of plain and simple everyday work me, delivering consignments for industry. Bruno. It's Bruno. elementary, but it's yes. just as well Bruno. to have top-notch professionals doing it, just in case something yes. goes very Bruno. slightly wrong. I know who you want. It's a simple mistake. Happens all the time. Yeah, it's very interesting. Smart, you idiot. You got a car? Yes. Get into it and get out of here. Go down there 50 yards and put the package in the back of a white valium. And don't come here again or I'll kill you. Don't ever let me see you again. I'll kill you. Well, that seemed to go pretty well. No, I've, I've got to go. 37 yeah. years old, long-winded, pompous, was born with executive stress. Thank you very much. Yes, we uh, will get back to you. OK, bye-bye. Hello. Good morning. Are either of the uh, principals in? Uh, no, I'm afraid you've just missed the principals. Ah. But I am expecting the principals back, if you'd care to wait. They can't be very far away. No, I think not. Can I help you? If it's a job of some sort, perhaps I can help. Well, it's a private matter, actually, of a fairly delicate nature, concerning, as it does, a uh, marital relationship. I see. Uh, your own marital relationship? Frankly, yes. It hasn't been easy coming here. I won't pretend it has. It's not an easy thing to do. I'm not going to like spying on my wife. You may as well know that. It's not something that I'm comfortable with. It's not something I'd like the idea of at all. But I'm afraid my hand has been forced. I'm afraid my wife is carrying on a liaison outside the conventions of marriage. No, I'm not happy about having her followed. Does but your I'm... wife deny having... Oh, no, 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 no. I haven't discussed this with my wife. That'd be a breach of faith. No, it would put at risk that bond of trust that exists between us. Yes, I can see that it might do that. Lovely day for it. Relax. I'm not critical of Barbara. I consider myself the luckiest man in the world to have had Barbara. You do appreciate that you don't need adultery as grounds for divorce proceedings. We're not talking divorce here. I want to know what's going on. I accept a lot of the blame myself. I haven't always paid sufficient attention to my wife in recent years. The little things that you do when you're well, frankly, when you're falling in love, I mean, that's what we're talking about, isn't it? Why run away from it? The little things like opening doors for each other, buying each other bunches of flowers, laughing at things, just because they strike you as amusing. Well, we've stopped doing these things, you see, and obviously it's partly my fault. Well, I accept that. I don't resile from that at all. The 
that car behind us. Are they following us? Yes, of course they are. Well, keep down. Victor can find someone else to meet Bruno. I mean, we don't even know what's in those packages. We don't work for Victor. Exactly. I mean, what are we doing running around for Victor? We should be doing our own work. Different work. Yeah, very different work, if possible. Yeah, perhaps not quite so physical. A more intellectual type of work. Challenging work. Test the skills. Yeah, something exhausting. 24 hours a day, round the clock. No time to do anything else at all. Hands full. Love to help, Victor, but... Uh, no time. No time, Victor. No can do. Sorry, Victor. Sorry, Victor. I feel much better now we decided that. Two copies, please, Jack. Should we tell him? I don't think so. He's a busy man. Yes, yeah, true. G'day, Pat. How are you? Oh, not bad, thanks. So, pretty good. Anything happened today? No, not much. A couple of phone calls, visit from an extremely boring person with regard to his marital relationship. Is this a job? G'day, Ken. G'day, Pat. Is this a job you're talking about? Does he want his wife tailed? Pardon? Pat, has someone approached you with regard to the surveillance of a third party? A bag of wind named Bill Martin wants you to snoop round after his wife. Looks big, Ken. Full effort called for, I think. Uh, overboard, I think, boys. These people just have a little domestic squabble on their hands. It won't even keep you awake. No, that doesn't do you justice, Pat. These are people's lives we're talking about here. Yeah, for heaven's sake, Pat, pull yourself together. Thanks, Jeff. You don't even know what this guy wants. He wants professional help, Pat, and I think he's entitled to get it. That's what a democracy's all about, Pat. Yes, we'll have to drop everything else, but we'll do it. I agree. No distractions. Distractions? What are we going to do for an income? Well, we'll have to sell a lot of debenture stock, but we'll get by. One of the key things in any investigation is the ability to listen. To pay close attention so that the great jigsaw of information falls neatly into place. I don't blame Barbara. There's always the possibility that there's a that. fact in there a lot somewhere. Of in Barbara. I see it from time to time. Or oh, she tries to hide it, but I see it. Emotional hurt. And she has needs, of course, like any other woman. I mean, I don't have to tell you blokes that. I suppose that all this sounds very personal to you, but I want you to have a complete understanding of exactly how things stand between us. Yes, it all helps. I'm sure we can piece together Do you know what the trouble is? No. Business. Ah, really? Oh, yes. I know that sounds strange, but you think about it. Do you have... I'm not down on business. Don't get me wrong. Business has been very good to me in many ways. But let's face it, it does make demands on you. And life is a question of priorities. Business isn't everything. I mean, you blacks are in business. Yeah, it's not everything. Exactly. There has to be an emotional side. It's... Well, it's like a balance. It's like... Like an environment. Do you have a photo of your wife? If she finds it necessary to have someone else share her fellowship and help her achieve her potential, and she's happy, mark you, then in all honesty, I'd have to say that I'm happy too. It's just that I want to know. Your wife's name is Barbara? Well, and I, in there, well, there's a woman in there, a secretary or something. I don't know where they are. Look, ring her. She'll get a message to them. Hello? No, not here at the moment. No, not here either. No, only me. Oh, really? Well, I'm sure they'll turn up. Well, no, they didn't, but I'm sure they'll turn up. Yeah, I will. What time? Oh, gosh, they haven't got long, have they? Uh, where are you? Yeah. Right. Look, somebody will be there. Yeah. OK. Bye. <sighs> Led by idiots. Is it Barbara? Do you know the most tragic thing? 
Is there a photo of your wife? Oh, indeed there is. I'll get you one in a moment. Do you know the most tragic thing about this whole unhappy scenario? In real terms? In real human terms, Ken. When you have a problem, you have to confront it. You have to deal with it one to one. Resolve it. Excuse me. In fact, before you even do that, you need to analyze it, which is what we're doing here. Find out what it is. Identify it. Excuse me a minute. Now, let's take this Barbara business. You see, if we break it down rationally. Ooh. help you. I'm Pat. I was just speaking to you on the phone. Mm, yes. Ten minutes ago. Yes. Uh, you phoned our office ten minutes ago about a parcel that had to be picked up. Did I? Yes. You asked for Bryce or Ken. Uh, they're both out, so I came myself. Where are they? I don't know. Are you aware that they've done work for us? Well, I'm not aware of all the details. But you are aware that they've done deliveries? Oh, yes. From here to St Kilda? Absolutely. Every Wednesday? Every Wednesday, yes. OK, Bert. Here's what we do. We put that in the back of your car and you go to the Fitzroy Street Shopping Centre. Yes. Well, that's what you do. You park and while you're away powdering your hooter, a magic wand is waved over the car and the parcel disappears. Well, they must have told you that. Well, yes, they did. I could just never work out how it was done. Yours not to reason why, Pat. People with inquiring minds tend to fall by the wayside in the package delivery business. It's all there. Show Pat to a car, will you, Ivan? And uh, ask Hell to step in for a moment. Bye. Bye, Pat. Find out where those two stupid bastards are, will you? This subcontracting's not on. That woman could get hurt. I was looking for something for a present. Did you have anything in particular in mind, or...? Yeah, I thought uh, maybe something from Paris or Rome. Something expensive and rather special, I think. Do you have any ball games? Um...
sure there's a perfectly logical yes. explanation. Oh. Now listen. Good oh. eye. Shut up. Mind if I have a cigarette? Shut up. Yeah, that's a better idea. Shut up. Yeah. Victor sent us to talk to you two. Where were you today? You didn't pick nothing up. Yeah, we haven't had time. We've got a lot on. Look, we know used to Victor. Why doesn't he get some? Shut up! Out? Listen, we're working on an international case. Shut up. He oversees a fair bit from now on, yeah. You were lucky to catch Shut him. Shut up! We're out of that line of work from now on. Shut up! It was very good work, actually. Very Shut good. Shut up! Oh. 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 Me, 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 me. Victor says number one. No subcontract. You took on the job, you make the deliveries, right? Number two, no women. Especially no women that Victor hasn't already seen. What are you talking about? I don't know, but I agree with him. Now, you two mongrels do exactly as we tell you, or we'll wipe you right out. End of story, okay? Sure, yeah, I understand. Now wake up to yourself. Victor says jump. Jump! What the hell was all that about? I don't know. Seemed to go pretty well, though, didn't you? You were both out. You never tell me what's going on. I just went and picked it up. You got any discipline? God knows what it was. Motor parts. <sighs> Park your car, go for a walk, come back, parcel gone. That's very cloak and dagger for motor parts, Bryce. It's doggy doggy motor parts, Pat. You've done well, Pat. You've done very well indeed. Yeah, you have done well, Pat. Can you ask Jack if he's got any aspirin? I've got a bit of eye strain. Why would that Victor pay us $150 to shift a parcel for him when he can put it in a cab for five? Ooh. Shoddy management, I would think. Brainless. They're their own worst enemy, some of these small business people. I could have been walking the bloody plank today trying to help you a couple of twerps. Are you going to get yourselves killed if you're not careful? Pat, could you not say that quite so loudly, please? Look, we're giving it away, that sort of work. Yeah, we don't do that anymore. No, we're not doing that sort of work anymore. Does Victor know that? I'm pretty sure we mentioned it to him the other day. You haven't told him. He doesn't know. He told me you do a regular delivery. Ah, uh, that's he? not exactly no, true. No, Once no. a week, he said. No, 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 no. He's lying. Well, who punched you up then? Nobody punched us up. Just a bit of sinus trouble. Oh, look, you sort it out. Whatever it is, sort it out. If you don't, you're going to be in big trouble. When you're following someone you've lost contact with altogether, and your sinuses are playing up, and you're reporting to the client, it makes very sound business sense not to burden him with the entire truth. Ah, good. Come in. Come in. Well, here we are again. Hmm. Now, your wife has been under constant surveillance. Almost constant. Pretty much constant surveillance. Is she behaving normally? Bryce? Yes and no. I mean, what's normal? From where we stood, she appeared to be... Normal. Pretty yes, normal. I would say so. Certainly not abnormal. Where did she go? What did she do? Well, pretty much as you thought, really. Fair bit of shopping. Yes, oh. a lot of shopping. She's good at shopping. And I don't mean that in any sexist sort of a way, Bryce. That's not the sort of man I am. Barbara has an actual talent for shopping. She does, yes. Yeah. She seems to take to it very easily. Yes, we remarked on it several times, I think, from memory. It, uh, it's in the report. Where did she shop? Mainly boutiques. Several boutiques. That's not like her. Where else? Where else? Ken? Where else? Uh, chemists? That would make more sense. She's always buying lotions. She has lovely skin. Yes, was chemists. Lots of them. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think some of them had been boutiques that have since become chemists. Yeah, quite a lot of them had. It's an intriguing case, this. How do you mean? Huh? Oh, intriguing. Mm. Fascinating and absorbing case. Very time consuming. Oh, yes. We've had to drop everything else. The sense of fulfillment, too, the feeling that we're really getting somewhere. Where, do you think? Well, apart from the shopping thing, there are one or two leads that we think have got pay dirt written all over them. Ah, good. It feels very good, this case. Frankly, it's beginning to feel very good indeed. Partly my fault, Bruno. 
I didn't have time to brief them properly. I'm sorry. We've actually just given them a little light workout over another matter. I don't think we'll have any more trouble. Good day. Good afternoon. Sleuth's not here. Not at the moment. Oh, well, doesn't matter. You might get one of them to give me a ring. Tell them I need some help with a character called Victor. Victor? Victor, yeah. You might have spoken to him on the telephone or heard Holmes and Watson talking about him. I don't know. No, I haven't. They never tell me anything. I, uh, I never know what's going on. No. Fair enough. Oh, well, this probably doesn't concern you anyway. What is it? No, no, you're better off out of it. Why don't you put on your least patronising tone and tell me what it's about? Well, if your boys are involved with a character called Victor who runs an import-export business and might have need of delivery staff from time to time, they should drop him like a stone. There's going to be a very bad accident soon and I'd rather no one we knew got hurt. Absolutely. If I close my eyes and press my thumbs deep into my temples, I can see the old house, the river sweeping by, the wool shed with the cattle yards out the back, mum in the kitchen, fixing the trail bike. what his wife's car looks like. It's not going to bowl him over. We've got 500 photos of her driving it down Victoria Street, is it? It's marketing. Looks good in the report. Colour and movement. Take one out of the back. Huh? Black car, right behind us. He says it's on a string for two days. Well, I don't know. They don't seem to be going anywhere. Yeah. No. Right. Okay. Okay, I will. And um, you ring their office, okay? Right. Hello. Hello, Pat. You have dialed the office of Excelsior Research Foundation. Unfortunately, this office is unattended at present. Should you wish to leave a message, we'll be happy to get back to you. Please speak clearly five seconds from now. Bring the camera. Oh, what for? Oh, I don't know. Something might happen. This is where you need the camera. We took some photos of a car. The least we can do is take some pictures of the woman. There's not enough light in there. You can take pictures in the dark of that thing. At night, underwater. There's even an attachment that will let you take pictures of the inside of your own stomach. Do you know how much light there is down there? We're out of film, all right? Where's she gone? I don't know. Oh, we can't have lost her. Where is she? in along here, okay? So, uh, measure it up. Oh, I measured it up yesterday. Oh, miserable bastard. Uh, is this the council records office? Uh, 
extremely serious. Have they told you, for instance, they're being followed? They're not, are they? Yes. Who by? Victor's people. What for? I don't know. Can't imagine. There must be some connection, but we can't work it out. They haven't told me anything. It really is a well-oiled machine, isn't it? Couldn't run a raffle, could they? Council Records Office. What's that? Don't know. It's a package of some sort. Please start. How did it get here? You must have left the doors unlocked. No, I locked the doors. Now, how could that get in here if the doors were locked? Look, I locked the doors. You might recall about 30 seconds ago I unlocked the doors. Well, I couldn't have done that unless they'd previously been locked now, could I? Now, I'm not saying it wasn't locked when we got back. I'm saying it wasn't locked when we left. And who do you suppose locked the doors while we were away? The person that left this here. Excuse me a minute. Settle an argument for us, will you? Was that car locked when you put the package in it? It's okay, it'll be there. Get off my back, I've got other problems. It's on its way. Are we gonna deliver it? No, no, yet, one thing at a time. I don't like this. Oh, I don't know, we found her. At least we've got something to tell Bill Martin. Well, I've shaken him off. We're not supposed to be shaking him off. We're following the people in front of him. You moron. What's the matter with him? The lights green. Well, well. Well, 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 well. <laughs> well, well. Well, frankly, it doesn't surprise me. The signs were always there. I think we all knew that something like this was on the cards. An older man, was it? Father figure? Bit of a fixation with a lot of women, apparently, older men. It's not a fixation with an older man, I don't think. Ah, well, apparently you can't always be sure. Fairly you... sure in this case, I think. Really? How old? Oh, I would say 20. A youth. Oh, really? <sighs> the son she never had, perhaps. Plays with a new wave rock band called the Suicide Apes. Poor, 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 poor Barbara. It's all in the Daily Report. Mm. Well, I suppose she is a woman of strong desires. Always has been. I'll be brutally honest, she's always been a bit of a handful in that department. It's the quiet ones that go, Ken. Look, am I going to meet this fellow? I don't know. Do you want it? I think I should, yes. Look, could you set up a meeting, him, me, Barbara, by all means. You two, if you can make it. I think we need dialogue. I think we need to find that basis of communication, to find that common ground. Well, we can try, I suppose. To bridge that gap, Bryce. If only I can bridge that gap. Get on to Neville, will you? I want those two idiots brought in. Excelsior Research Foundation, hello. Oh, Mr. Blair. No, they're in a meeting, I'm afraid. They should be free in about half an hour. Look, I'll definitely get one of them to call you. No, the meeting's not here, it's at the client's. We're flat to the wards, we're on overload. Our health is suffering. We need sleep. It'd be ridiculous to take on more work than we could handle. It would be irresponsible. I see. I mean, you're in business. It's the difference between being professional and not doing your job properly. Sounds like you'd better give up some of your other work. Ah, well, you see, we can't do that because we... Shut up! Now, look. Shut up, Bryce. What you give up is your own business. 
I'm telling you what you're not going to give up. You do these deliveries when I say so. And you make absolutely no mistakes at all. And you keep your mouths very tightly shut. And I won't kill you. Could someone open a window? Pretty humid in here, isn't it? Several features you might point out if they do drop in at any stage. This person's name is Neville. Works for Victor. A courier, boys. Oh, good. Oh, Mr. Mr. Blair. Something that might interest you, boys. I've just been telling Pat this is Neville. Neville who? Works for Victor. Victor? Neville's been following you. These two are Victor's thugs. Grievous bodily and armed robbery, respectively, but in a tight spot they'll kill you as soon as look at you. We think these two are from around here somewhere. They were following a woman who was in this shop, but we can't work out why. She was probably buying something. Where is it exactly? Brighton. The woman's name is Barbara Martin. Good use of light. Victor is in the drug trade and he's in trouble. If these two don't get out, they're going to get blown away. Nothing surer. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. Who are they? I don't know what he's talking about. Oh, you bloody idiots. He's trying to help you. I heard there's nothing much happening at all here. They went in about 20 minutes ago. Hey, wait a minute. That's, um... That's, what's his name? Uh, Blair. That's right, it's that cop Blair. Look, get on to Victor. We've got trouble. Ken, if you don't get out of this soon, there's going to be some trouble. Ken? Yeah, I'll talk to Bryce about it. Ken. Promise. Really? Are you absolutely sure? Absolutely. Why would Bill hire someone to spy on me? That's probably not quite the way he'd see it. You see, he sees it more as a sort of... Oh, what a stupid thing to do. What a very stupid, very sleazy thing to do. He's very concerned for you. He feels that... I could read that. Yeah, I could see that. Concern. Yeah. Why doesn't he talk to me about his bloody concern? I don't think he really feels he's able to. He's had 14 years to slide it into the conversation. Now, look, I can emphasize with that. You can? Oh, yeah. Society's full of people who can't get in touch with their own emotions. Is he anal retentive? I really wouldn't know. He'd like to arrange a meeting at a convenient time that suits both parties. This is absurd. We live in the same house. Yeah, but it's a different headspace, though, isn't it? Still, you know, I suppose a, a formal meeting could uh, provide a different frame of reference. Yeah, go for it. He blames himself, you know, for our drifting apart. I know he does. I can feel it. I bet that's what he's going to do. Blame himself. He's going to stand there and be culpable and sanctimonious and not resile from things. Oh, I can't stand it. Let him have his meeting. She seemed to take it fairly well. Hmm. The meeting's okay. You know, I think Barbara reads Bill pretty much the way we do. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think the best way to find Ralph appealing would be to spend a fair bit of time with Bill. <laughs> Bloody hell. It's a great country, isn't it, for a young couple that are really prepared to give it a go? Grab your hat, Pat. We're, uh... We're, uh... Bryce, have you met Neville? We're a bit pushed for time, Neville. Oh, there. Good night, Neville. Would you like another biscuit, Neville? No, thanks, Pat. Victor wants to have a little chat with these two, uh... gentlemen. When you're, uh...
when you're ready. Yeah, we were just on our way around here. <laughs> That's a shot. <laughs> if Bill Martin rings, tell him there's a meeting at his place at 9 o'clock. Thanks for the coffee, Pat. Better tell him to carry on without us. There's an outside possibility that sinus thing might flare up in you. The problem is, you've been talking to the police. That's simply not true, Victor. We haven't even seen a cop, let alone spoken to one. Ken will back me up on that. That's true, Victor. You see, Neville here saw Detective Sergeant Blair walking out of your office this afternoon. Blair? Blair? Blair, is he a cop? He's not, is he? Blair, he... he's an encyclopedia. Blair... Shut up! Now, listen to me. If you've told him anything, you're dead. Stand up. Go and get in that bloody car and do the Footscray job. Sit down! If you're late, I'll kill you. If you make a mistake, I'll kill you. If anyone else makes a mistake, I'll kill you. I want you to sit in that car with that package until it's picked up. And if you take your minds off this job for one second, I'll kill you. Now get out of here before I get angry. Kel, your brother who wanted the courier work, have him ring me. Neville, make sure they don't get out of that car. And Neville, don't park too near it yourself. I'll be all right. It's a perfectly ordinary everyday raid. All that happens is that we follow them. They pick up the parcel, go to the drop, hand it over and wallop. Good night, Victor. Then what? Well, then they're all right. They're protected. They're in custody. They're in really serious trouble and they'll be out of the office for a bit, but at least they'll be alive. Do you know anyone called Bill Martin? Uh, yeah, he's a client of ours. Marriage problems. Yeah, that's all right. Why? Well, I left a message on your answering service. I wants the boys to bring some cheesels and something to use with a dip. Remind me, if we ever get out of this shambles alive, to ring my mother more often. I missed my nephew's birthday the other day. Animals, too. I've always liked animals. Yeah. I'm going to make it a point to be kinder to animals from now on. We could open a kennel. Kennels is what we could do. Stay there. <laughs> what the hell are you doing here? Get back over there. There's a car about 50 yards down the road. Falcon. Is that the contact? Oh, there's someone in it. Cops. Are you going to call it off? No way, they'll be plugged into a frequency. You get back over to the car there and sit tight. that happen? I thought that... Yeah, all right. Yeah, if you can. Thanks. Need some sort of a mix-up. Decoy or something. I'm not sure what's happened yet. And your blokes have disappeared. Well, are you after them? They've got an all-car alert out on them. Good grief. Victor's after them. We're after them. Now the contact will be after them. Possible to make a complete mess of something, these boys will do it. They knew how stupid they were, they wouldn't get up in the morning. I don't know. Don't ask me, I don't know. We can't. There are cops everywhere. It's a setup. We don't know. Just go to ground until it's over. Don't worry about them. They'll be dead in 20 minutes. 
Phil. Ah, good, good. Sorry we're late. Traffic. Mm. Did you pick up something for the dip? No, we didn't like to stop once we got going. Lock the door. We just came straight here. <clears throat> well, never mind. Sit down, sit down. <clears throat> Bryce? <clears throat> I've said it consistently over the years, and I feel it bears repeating, that if I felt that it would make Barbara happy, I would quite literally stand on my head. L literally, I mean that. There isn't anything I wouldn't do to make Barbara happy. Now, you know that, Barbara. I don't always have time, and I sometimes resent the demands that my work makes upon me, but that's not of my doing. I don't like it, but it's not something that I can do terribly much about. I mean, it's probably pretty much the same in your line of work, Ralph. I mean, you just can't go putting your <laughs> instrument down and go <laughs> running off every time you feel you'd rather be making someone else happy instead. He doesn't play an instrument, Bill. He's a singer. Yeah, but I, I know what he means, though. Of course you do. I mean, I, I think I can really see where you're coming from there. You, you see, we have communication here. Mm -hmm. We understand each other. It's... It's cool. Oh, God. I think I'm going to be sick. Cup of tea, anyone? Oh, that'd be lovely, darling. Thank you. So every crook in town will be after us. I know. We're going to need some help here. Why don't we just take the car and go bush? Victor will kill us. Only if he finds us. Oh, that's a very short-term solution. Oh, we can't stay oh. here. Why don't we call Blair? What for? Well, he once said if we ever get in a jam, he'd help us out. Victor will kill us. Either Victor will kill us or Victor will kill us. I don't like it at all. I'll get the package. Uh, excuse me. I think I've left the lights on in the car. Just go out and check. It's the same deal in the rock industry. I mean, people are only out for what they can get. Nobody's concerned with what's... what's real anymore. I've said it many times, Ralph, and Barbara will back me up on this. It doesn't matter what your line of work is, it's still people that you have to deal with. Am I right, Ralph? I mean, that is the bottom line, isn't it? I, mean, I can only speak from the point of view of the rock industry, but... yeah. Of course. Where's the parcel? Why didn't you bring it? Didn't seem necessary. Uh, excuse me, could I use your phone, please? Of course. Do you take milk, Ken? Yes, thanks. And disparate. It's a motto that I've had printed on my desk pad at work. Deal with people on a one-to-one -one basis. That's why. I call this meeting, Ralph. I hope you understand that. Well, I can see where your headspace is at now. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I respect you for it. That means a great You ring the police? Yes, I think it's time we got the police in, see if we can't work together on this one. Yeah, they'll appreciate our input, I'm sure. I think we could do more with the fire brigade, too. Uh, yes, hello. I'd like to speak to Detective Sergeant Blair, please. Where are you? Stay there. We'll be there in a few minutes. You're okay. Tell the super the address and tell him two passengers. Where are they? Who is this Bill Martin? Oh, God. No, Ralph. No, that's not what I'm saying. You. You can be a company. Me? All you've got to do is register yourself as one. Mm. You're mad if you don't. I mean, all those rock bands like mm -hmm. the Beatles, they're all companies. You ought to see Graham. Barbara, Ralph ought to see Graham. You ought to see Graham. Graham. Family trust, now that's another way to go. Uh, we might have to shoot off a bit early, I'm afraid. Got a mate with a young JC's project we said we'd give him a hand with. <laughs> 
honestly, I know how to deal with these guys. They're not going to be armed. Look, they won't know anything about drugs. And, and if we go in there like the bloody SAS, we might as well send Victor a telegram. Why don't we talk to them? And I know it's not my case, but believe me, this is overkill. Whose name is it in? Volkswagen. No, that's not what I meant. Who owns it? Oh, I do. Well, you're mad, you see. Your company should own your car. Yeah. I haven't got a car. I don't own my car. Barbara doesn't own a car. Do you, darling? They're all company cars. Now, these lads here, they wouldn't own a car, would you? Can't remember. No, we don't have a car. Uh, no, we don't have a car. More trouble than there were cars. You see? You your phone? Thanks, everybody. Well done. Good night. Right, now... Excuse me, do you mind if I go and... No, you can't do anything. You can just sit there in complete silence while I tell you what's going to happen. One word out of you and I'll hand you over to Central. And that'll make Central very happy indeed. You have been working for Victor Del Marco. You've been photographed. We've got dates, times, we've even got films of you. You're in the heroin trade. Now, we know you're not running it. We know you don't know what you're doing. But you have been working for a heroin ring. Now, this little caper last night we set up, it didn't work. Victor's still out there. The only people we have detained from this drug ring are you two. No, oh, no. Shut up! We can't let you go because Victor will kill you. You need our protection. And the feeling here is that we don't need you at all. Trouble is, if you go to jail, Victor will kill you there, too. That's an administrative problem. If I were you, I would tell the drug squad every single little detail I could remember about this whole sordid mess and hope that someone could get me out of it. Now, I'm working on something at the moment, but if you don't do exactly as you're told, it's not going to work. We're detained on charges, really, on a series of charges relating to... charges relating to offences which they admit took place over a period from 6th of June to... Sunday paper. Yes. It's a sick world, Neville. Bastards. I'll call the boys off. We're not going to dirty our hands. They do not exist. They are scum. Blair was saving their necks. Probably never work again. I don't even know any children. Look, he had to make it a nasty crime to keep Victor away, otherwise he would have killed you. 
It's your fault. You're so stupid. You're fired, Pat. Yes, you're fired, Pat. I think you're very lucky. This will blow over after a while. Probably nobody will remember it. Don't touch those cups with your hands. <laughs>